So welcome to a short series of videos in my new free email service, Money Week Tutorials. My emails are available once a week to your inbox on a Thursday at moneyweek.com forward slash Tim Bennett. And for the next three or four videos in the series, I want to cover a topic that one or two people have asked me about, and that is how to find income or winners. In other words, how to find stocks that pay a decent income. Now, why are people asking me for that particular topic right now? Well, income is crucial to most investors. All right, we're in a low interest rate environment right now. The returns on other assets are pretty poor. I mean, where else could you go to get income if you wanted to? And the answer is you do have some other choices. One of them would be a simple bank account. So you could, for example, simply put your money in cash. And cash has some value as an asset at the moment. It gives you the ability to be flexible, gives you the ability to pounce on cheap assets, and it does pay some interest. But the interest rate available on most bank and building society accounts right now is pretty low. So cash is disappointing most people. The banks, with the funding for lending scheme, are taking money from the government, and that means that they're not competing as hard for your money as perhaps they would otherwise be. So there are cash accounts out there, low risk but also low return. You could go for bonds. Now these are IOUs <coughs> issued by companies and governments. Not the subject of this video series, we're going to focus on another asset called shares, but you could give your money to the government by buying a gilt, a government bond, or you could give your money to a company in the form of a loan, if you like, a tradable loan, called a corporate bond. But the return, the yield, we'll be looking at a calculation a bit later in the series, the yield on those, those assets is pretty low right now. People have been panic buying government bonds as a safe haven, squashing the yield down, and they've been piling into corporate bonds, making them much less value or good value than they used to be. So, uh, and apart from, apart from that, unless you're kind of au fait with how bonds work, there are other risks in terms of understanding what you're buying as well. So the world of bonds will generate income, but for various reasons, it's maybe not the perfect place to be hunting it down right now. And that's not the subject of my video series. So where else can you go? Well, moving up the risk return spectrum, you've got equities, and that's where we're gonna be focusing some of the time during this series. People have been asking me, well, how can I generate income? from equities in this low interest rate environment. We'll be answering that question uh, throughout this little short series. <clears throat> but there are one or two other alternatives too. Some people might try and get income from property, and there are some gamblers out there who might even try and do it with derivatives. If I could spell derivatives, it'd be a lot quicker. So there we go, derivatives. Um, now, we're gonna be focusing in on that one, all right? but. Some people use property as a way to generate income, rental income. Problem with property as an asset, and this is something to think about, you know, if you're looking for income, you've got to think about other things too. It's not just about the income return you get. Problem with property is it can be very liquid, not always easy to offload it if you need the money back quickly. Okay, it's quite a complicated asset to buy in terms of the process. All right, no, certainly much slower than something like a, a share listed on a, on a recognized exchange. There are uh, taxes to think about. Okay, that's true of all these assets, all right, but you have to watch out for things like the stamp duty on property, transaction taxes, um, and so on. All right, and uh, then you've got void periods where, periods where tenants don't pay you. So I'm gonna suggest that property on this kind of risk and return diagram, so as we come down here, we're saying uh, the risk increases, but the return may also increase. Unfortunately, life is never that simple, but in principle, equities will give you, normally, a higher uh, return than, say, government bonds, which in turn will give you a higher return than cash. Okay? So there are risks. The value of all these investments, with the possible exception of cash, can go down as well as up. Okay? Uh, liquidity is a problem if you're trying to sell something like a property. Okay? Derivatives are pretty spicy. You're not going to cover those in this series. They're only for really for the for people who are sort of shorter term traders and so on. Um, so what we're focusing on is the equity box just there, all right? And the point of the next series of short shot videos will be to introduce uh, how you get income out of equities, one or two of the key pieces of jargon that any uh, equity in income investor should be familiar with, 
okay? And also one or two of the pitfalls, maybe, of going hunting for high income from shares. All right, so in the next video, we'll take on the uh, crucial topic of what is the income return from an equity known as, the answer is a dividend, okay? The next video in the series after that, we'll take on the crucial as issue of yield, that's the return you get from equities, and in the fourth video in this series, we'll take a look at some of the pitfalls of just going for the highest yield equities in the market. And before I wrap up this introductory video, just a reminder, you can get these videos free to your inbox every Thursday, uh, simply by going to www.moneyweek.com forward slash Tim Bennett.